921 on this Monday morning. Glad that you have decided to make us a part of your start of your work week. Time to get back to it, everybody. Most of you had a abbreviated work week last week, so this is going to feel like a, a marathon for you this week. But that's all right, folks. Phil Jones with you. Welcome into the Phil Jones Show. Coming to you strong over 11 counties throughout South Georgia and North Florida. I want to say good morning to our friends up in the Valdosta, Lake Park area, Eccles County, Lanier, and, of course, all of our friends and neighbors throughout North Florida. So glad that you have uh, decided to make us a part of your Monday, as well as every day. And don't forget, folks, we do it Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. All right, folks, as promised, we have in studio with us uh, current Clay County Clerk of Court, uh, but also, more importantly, and the reason that he's here, of course, he has announced his candidacy for the newly drawn uh, Congressional District 3 seat in Florida. James Jett in studio with us. Mr. Jett, how are you? I'm doing very well, Phil. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And uh, James, we had you in here last week and we had so much positive feedback that we wanted to make sure that if anyone missed your uh, interview with us last week that uh, they, they had a chance to, to hear your uh, your views and uh, your platform today. So thanks for coming back in. No problem. And I, I want to say how much I appreciate the 107.5 listeners for giving me this opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um, obviously, uh, the the uh, uh, District 3 seat is uh, really heating up. Uh, seems to be um, some good competition, some stiff competition out there. But before we get into that, um, for those of us, uh, for the listeners that uh, may not be familiar who James Jett is, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Okay, I, yeah, I will. I'm a uh, lifelong resident of Clay County. Um, attended high school there, graduated from high school. I went to Florida, uh, to St. John's River Community College, and then the University of Central Florida, where I obtained a degree in criminology. My background is law enforcement. I came back to Clay County and uh, went to the Jacksonville Police Academy, which I graduated with honors, then attended the FBI National Academy, became a police officer, worked up through the ranks, and then uh, decided to run for county commissioner and uh, was elected in 1982 and for 12 years was a county commissioner there in Clay County, then ran for clerk of courts and uh, I have been the clerk of courts in Clay County for the last 14 years and presently serve in that capacity. I'm a widower. Uh, my wife passed away with her second bout of breast cancer uh, three years ago. I have three children. Um, and like myself, I've tried to point them in the direction of public service. I feel like public service is a calling. Uh, I think the Bible indicates that in the fact that Jesus himself said, I came not to be served, but to serve. My daughter, the oldest, uh, works in the Clay County Sheriff's Office in communications. My youngest son just graduated from the University of Central Florida and will be entering the uh, Army. He wants to go into Special Forces uh, sometime after the election. And my middle son uh, is a graduate of the University of Florida and also a graduate uh, with a law degree from the University of Georgia. He presently works for the U.S. Secret Service and is assigned to the Miami Field Office and uh, actually returns home today uh, as part of a 22-man team that is protecting Governor Mitt Romney. Is that right? Yes. Uh, How about that? So he's, he's loving it. He's doing a good job for us. And, uh, and so uh, that's, that's kind of a little bit about me. Very good. Very good. Um, well, obviously, uh, background in, in politics. Um, what exactly, though, uh, made you decide to, to run for, uh, for Congress? Well, you know, I think it's a commitment. Um, I was running unopposed in the clerk's race uh, when, you know, I began to get disturbed like much of the people in District 3 and much of America is disturbed about the direction our country is going. Um, I think, uh, uh, Mitt Rom not Mitt Romney, but uh, Rush Limbaugh said it best. He believed that this is the most important election in the history of America. Absolutely. And I think now is the time where we either stand up for what is right or we accept what is wrong. And so therefore, I was approached after the new district maps came out in uh, November. And uh, the district is very conducive to uh, someone from Clay County running. And I was approached by a group of businessmen to, to seek this office. And after much prayer and deliberation, I decided to withdraw my candidacy as clerk of courts and uh, file for, <coughs> for this office, uh, again, to, to offer myself up, uh, not only just to Clay County this time, but to the, to the people of District 3. 
in studio this morning with James Jett, currently Clay County Clerk of Court, but a candidate for the newly drawn Congressional District 3 seat, which he is seeking. Um, Mr. Jett, you, obviously you have extensive experience at the local level of government, uh, county commissioner for 12 years. Uh, as you stated, you have an extensive background in law enforcement as a, uh, a, a policeman. Um, uh, you also, I think, were a detective. Um, and of course now you're Clay County Clerk of Court. Um, do you see that, uh, the fact that this will be your first shot at a state position as a disadvantage or an advantage? Uh, touch on that if you will. Well, I, I would consider it an advantage because I've been tried in fire. Our county is somewhat similar to Hamilton County and most of your listing area. We're rural, uh, primarily. We are a bedroom community for uh, Jacksonville. And uh, when I ran for clerk, and, and as a county commissioner, I took positions that, uh, that were conservative. Uh, and so therefore, as a result of that, I've been tried by that. On a couple of occasions as a county commissioner, when uh, the other members of the board wanted to raise taxes, I took the position that no, we needed to reduce spending, and we needed to balance our budget. Uh, on two occasions, I voted against budgets because they included tax increases. And I became known in my uh, community by, by my people that I represent and by the media as the taxpayer's friend. You can go on, uh, on James Jet for Congress, James Jet for Congress dot com, and you can see the newspaper articles that reflect that. The second thing that makes me kind of unique, uh, and I mentioned this a week ago, was the fact that we were in the process of uh, of uh, zoning a hazardous material storage facility in Clay County. They had requested it. It was directly over the Floridian Aquifer. And so we turned it down uh, because it just didn't make sense. And uh, a couple of weeks after that, I was approached by a gentleman and offered $30,000 as a bribe to help that zoning restart and get passed. Uh, as a result of that offer, I approached the state attorney's office, let them know about it, or a body bug, had my phones tapped, uh, the subject met with the subject uh, and was recorded. Um, he was subsequently arrested, tried, convicted, and sentenced. So I have a... Now, this is while you were a sitting uh, Clay County Commissioner, is that correct? That's correct. That was 22 years ago, in 1989. And, uh, it was, and so, therefore, I, I, I'm running on the fact that character counts. And I believe that anyone that runs for public office uh, needs to have character, needs to be, possess honesty and integrity, because I believe it's a called position. And if they don't, uh, they're running for the wrong reason. In studio this morning with James Jett. Uh, Mr. Jett has been gracious enough to join us on this Monday morning. He is currently the Clay County Clerk of Court, just to the south of us here, and uh, again, a candidate for the uh, newly created Florida Congressional District 3 seat. Again, this is a seat newly created. Uh, includes much of the old District 6, which Cliff Stearns is uh, an incumbent for. Uh, also running for the seat is a retired Gainesville veterinarian Ted Yoho, State Senator Steve Ulrich from Cross Creek, and of course uh, uh, Mr. Stearns himself, Cliff Stearns, and Mr. Jett. Um, obviously, you've told us why you decided to run, James, um, but there are so many issues, and I know that this is one of the biggest reasons people, and, and part of the primary thing, that our listeners want to hear from you. What do you see, first of all, as the single biggest issue, and I know that's a tough one, um, the single biggest issue facing uh, our listeners and potential voters in, uh, in the District uh, 3 area? Well, I think uh, the same issue that affects District 3 is affecting our country uh, at all. And that's the fiscal responsibility or lack thereof by the Washington establishment. I mean, there, we have uncontrolled spending. Uh, we don't have a tax problem in Washington. We have a spending problem. Right. I think Marco Rubio said that correctly when he stated that. Uh, and in order for us to jumpstart our economy, in order for us to get back on track as a nation, we have to have fiscal responsibility. When I'm out here visiting with folks in District 3, uh, whether it's a businessman or a management level person or a farmer. And sometime during that conversation, they will address the fact that they are concerned about America's future. And I am too, and that's why I'm running. 
uh, we cannot continue to have revenues of 2.3 trillion, but spend over $3 trillion a year. Uh, we cannot uh, have a recorded deficit, the largest it's ever been for one month, according to Fox News, of $223 billion wow. in February. Uh, it's just a matter of time before our economy implodes. Uh, I read an article and listened to a gentleman who was an economic professor, and he said this, it's not a question of when or if, or is, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when our economy uh, implodes and we have a depression or a substantially more devastating recession than we are in now. You know, our unemployment is above 8% last month. It actually went up, increased instead of coming down. Wow. As the Obama administration said. I, I would say in Central Florida, North Central Florida, uh, the unemployment rate is substantially higher than that because of uh, where we're located and the lack of job opportunities in our district. But we cannot continue to survive as a nation if we continue to escalate our national debt. Right now, to illustrate this, this gentleman made it real clear. He says, well, we're at $16 trillion in debt. Now, that is equal to one year of the gross domestic product of America. Whoa. That's 32 times more than the nation of Greece has. And we see what is happening in Greece and France and the European countries now. Absolutely. We're on that road to where that will be what is going to happen to America if we don't stop the spending. So that concerns me. I think that's the number one issue uh, right now uh, since we uh, have the monetary, uh, you know, the reserve in the, the American dollar. We can pretty much print whatever money we want to. So as the debt escalates, we print more money. That's not the answer. No. We need a balanced budget. We have to balance our family's budget. We have to balance our local budgets. We have to balance our state budgets. And technically still operating nationally without a budget. A budget. That's correct. We're in, in 40 months, 40 plus months, we haven't had a budget. Unbelievable. We've had a spending plan. Right. As it's out of control. But, but that's not a budget. budget. You're right. right. You're correct. So I think that's the number one issue is to, to, uh, to get our spending under control to try to reduce our national debt and, uh, and, and obviously get a uh, balanced budget. I, I'm one of those guys that agrees that if it, uh, as a member of Congress that we should have a uh, no pay, no budget. If we can't adopt a budget as a Congress, stop our pay. I will promise you if you stop the pay of the United States Congress, the Senate and the House, that within a few months they will have a, a budget. We are in studio this morning, uh, joined by James Jett. He is the Clay County Clerk of Court, and he is a candidate for the newly created Florida Congressional District 3 seat. And uh, he has been gracious enough to join us this morning to allow you, the voters here throughout the District 3 area, which most of the Talk 107.5 FM listening area, uh, you reside within the District 3. So important stuff that you're able to hear this morning from one of the four candidates for the newly drawn uh, District 3 area. We're going to take a break, and we'll come back, and uh, we'll hear more from James Jett. That's when we return right here on The Voice for North Florida and South Georgia. Talk 107.5 FM WJHC. Sit with them all night. Everything they say is right. All right, 939 on this Monday morning. Phil Jones with you on the Phil Jones Show. We do it every weekday morning, Monday through Friday, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And we are uh, joined in studio this morning with James Jett, who is running for the uh, Florida Congressional District 3 seat. And, James, when we left off uh, before the break, we were talking about issues that you feel uh, is important to the uh, the listeners uh, and the many voters throughout uh, the the newly drawn congressional district three area, which again uh, consists of most of our listening area. Um, what about job creation? Obviously, we're talking about the unemployment numbers. What are, and it goes hand in hand with the sluggish economy that we're having. What are we going to be able to do to to generate jobs uh, in this area? Well, uh, you're absolutely right. I think cutting spending is just one of the prescripts for getting our economy back on, on uh, target. Uh, of course, I think the mo most important asset that we can do is to cut taxes. Ronald Reagan showed us and gave us a roadmap for starting the economy and jump-starting the economy uh, in the 1980s. And the first thing he did when he walked into office is cut taxes across the board 30%. 
So not only do we have to cut spending, I believe that we have to cut taxes. Uh, and I think by cutting taxes, cutting spending, and cutting regulations, three things that we must do right. that Ronald Reagan did, then we can jumpstart our economy and be begin to create jobs. You know, right now, America is the number one highest corporate tax rate in the world. It just went above Japan in March hmm. at 39.2% when they reduced theirs. With a corporate tax rate like that at 39%, our corporate America is leaving. They're going to other countries to, to, uh, to fulfill jobs and to create jobs. We've got to bring them back. I think, as uh, Mitt Romney has said, and I believe Newt Gingrich said this, that needs to be substantially cut. I would like to see it cut almost in half. Uh, you know, England is reducing theirs to around 25 percent. Canada is reducing theirs in 2012 to 15 percent, and yet we're remaining at 39.2 percent. So well, I, I, and, and Mr. Judd, don't, don't mean to interrupt you, but I, I do have to, to include, uh, hearing what you're saying, uh, I don't believe, even correct me if, if I am mistaken, but I don't believe that uh, history will show that there has ever been a nation that taxed its way to prosperity. Oh, that, no doubt about it. You can't tax your way to prosperity, and you can't spend your way to, out of a recession. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's a proven fact, yet our government is trying to do that yeah. uh, with a stimulus one package. And, 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 and the whole attitude of Washington is that government should be a part of all of our lives. And, and I don't believe that. I think that, uh, that we should have more business in government and less government in business. And so we need to cut taxes. We need to cut spending. I, I would advocate that, that, that we need a fair tax. Uh, we need to do away with the IRS and, uh, and do away with a tax system that is antiquated and full of holes and full of loopholes uh, so that people that are wealthy can get literally away with paying a little or nothing just simply because they can hire the best CPAs or best accountants. We need something that is fair, and I advocate the fair tax because then we as a population would know based on our income, what we would have to pay. It's commodities driven and, and so on, and it's very fair. Uh, if that doesn't work in Washington, then we certainly need to do a flat tax. Either one of those, I believe, would be a positive step forward. Uh, so, so eliminate or reduce the corporate tax rate, uh, do away with income taxes and institute something like the fair tax. Uh, we should eliminate the death tax or the inheritance tax. That is one of the most unfair taxes in America today where someone can work and pay taxes all their life, and then when they die, uh, they lose their business or their farms because they cannot pay those substantial death taxes. Right. So unfair. Uh, we need to permanently implement the Bush tax cuts. We need to keep the stimulus, stimulus tax cuts uh, in effect. Uh, we need savings to reduce the taxes on savings and investment accounts. And uh, overall, just, uh, just uh, fix our, our tax code. So I think taxes reduced spending reduced, regulations eliminated, uh, I, I would hope then our economy would get started and create more jobs for District 3. Talking with James Jett, he's a candidate, uh, Republican uh, candidate for the newly drawn uh, Congressional District 3 seat, which again consists of uh, the majority uh, of the Talk 107.5 FM listening area. Another top topic that's obviously a, a, a very um, hot issue when you talk to people. Of course, job creation, we touched on that. But what about health uh, care, James, and affordable health care? Uh, obviously, the, the Obamacare, uh, a lot of people are against that. But I do think this country needs some kind of affordable universal health care. Not an easy answer. I'd like to hear your, uh, your ideas, and, and, and I'd like to hear your stance on that, actually. Well, we do need something that will work. Uh, obviously, Medicare and Medicaid are, uh, because of lack of funding and a lack of commitment with this government, and by transferring monies out of those programs right. to balance the budget or to at least pay for uh, as a revenue source, uh, is not the answer. They're now financially unfeasible and we have to fix them. Okay. Uh, now we have to fix them, but when we do fix them, we have to make sure that we take care of those people who have paid their entire lives into these systems. Not only Medicare and Medicaid, but Social Security. And I, and I, I categorize those entitlements as personal entitlements uh, as opposed to social entitlements because these three areas are benefits that you and I and American citizens have paid into and should reap those benefits when they get elderly, sick, or ready to retire. 
Uh, so we need to fix those. Obamacare is not the answer. Uh, they're estimating the cost now, the Congressional Budget Office, to implement all the facets of Obamacare at $1.78 trillion. Great, okay. Now, that's in addition to our deficit now. Yep. So it's unaffordable. And not only that, but it steps on the constitutional principles upon which this country was founded. Absolutely. How should we tell churches that they have to buy and purchase insurance to pay for contraceptives and abortions and stuff like that? Why should we pass a bill in Congress where the leadership of the House stands up and said, hey, you can read it later. Just pass it today. Uh, it's just unconscionable that they would we'd do that. Uh, but we do need to do something to make Medicare and Medicaid uh, and, and by the way, uh, Obamacare was not the first time attempt at a nationalized health care. Okay. In the uh, 1980s, we had Clinton Care, and shortly thereafter, the Republican Party sponsored through a the sitting congressman now Cliff Stearns, something that we refer to as Stearns Care. It was the first nationalized health care proposal sponsored by Cliff Stearns, called Consumer Choice Health Safety Act of 1993. Is that right? Uh, so, and Obamacare was kind of modeled after it. it. It did some of the same things. It nationalized health care. It forced uh, uh, it on you that you had to be a participant of it under threats of penalties and so on. So I, I believe we... That sounds to, very similar to what's been proposed. Oh, absolutely. It was. As a matter of fact, in the Supreme Court case, in the arguments, they argued that the Republican Party had sponsored this particular bill in 1993 as a way of, uh, of trying to define into the Supreme Court that it's okay, that Obamacare is okay, that it was crossed party lines. They argued Stern's care. Uh, we do need a health care system, and one which empowers individuals and families, not the government, to choose uh, their own health care decisions. We have to give options and choices, which uh, leave the selection of the doctors and the services to the individual family members. We need to institute portability of health insurance plans and form partnerships with states and local governments which would promote answers to the unique health care challenges of local governments. And by working together, we can find solutions to this problem. Uh, Obamacare is not that solution. So uh, I would propose that we, we uh, you know, find the proper resources, the funding system to prop up Medicaid and Medicare, leave their trust, form, uh, trust uh, systems alone, and uh, make them available to our sick and elderly. Talking with James Chant, he is a candidate for District 3, the newly drawn congressional district seat here in north central Florida. You were talking earlier, uh, James, about a, a situation that occurred as you were when you were a, a sitting county commissioner uh, in Clay County where uh, there was an uh, uh, attempt to lure you uh, to make a favorable vote, and uh, of course, some funds were used. Uh, for that. We all know what that is. That's the B word. Um, but um, do you care to comment on the accusations, and this has been made public, uh, that you have made uh, against the Stearns campaign uh, along those same lines uh, in, the, in the way of uh, someone offering you um, a, a position or funds to withdraw from the campaign? Do you care to comment on that? I don't have any problem with it. As you said, it is uh, public information. Uh, it was certainly not my intent to be involved in something like this Absolutely. at the beginning of this campaign. But what I'm about to tell you is part of a sworn affidavit that the FBI has from me under threat of prosecution. But let me go back a little bit because I need to explain what happened. This is a little bit different than the, uh, the bribe in 1989 and, and why they would try to buy me out or bribe me out of the campaign after knowing that, that I would not accept something of, of, of that nature in 1989 is beyond me. Uh, this started in, uh, back in January uh, when the district maps came out uh, for this congressional district and they kind of were solidified. They had, uh, the, the lawsuits had not been launched, but they were pretty much set. And uh, I had a group of businessmen <coughs> in Clay County, some of them have been my past supporters, uh, approached me and, and asked me that uh, uh, that we uh, need to uh, have someone from Clay County run for this. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll move quickly through this. Uh, uh, so I, I decided that uh, I would get, take a look at it. Uh, Cliff Stearns had uh, contacted some of these businessmen and actually told them that he would support my candidacy because it was in it, his intent to run in the newly created district uh, of Ocala and, and south of that. 
uh, his, even his congressional aide stood up at two meetings and said, uh, Congressman Stearns wants somebody from Clay County to run. So based on all of those, I decided that would be exactly what I would do and withdrew my, from re-election uh, as, uh, as clerk of court. Okay, and again, this is the timeline. I want to make sure that we fit, that we make sure everyone knows what were uh, the in chronological order here. What was the timeline of this? Was this soon after you had announced your decision to run? That's that's when the fun started. Yes, it was. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I announced that I was running, withdrew from the race. This was in January. Right. And a couple of weeks after that, uh, Cliff Stearns had his congressional aide call me okay. and say that he had decided to run in this district okay. to establish an address up in Clay County and run in District 3. All right. And, uh, and he, at that point, he said, why don't you go back and run for a clerk of court? And when I get out in, uh, you know, when, whenever, two to six years, I'll, then I'll support you. And, I, and this is Stearns. I, this was Cliff Stearns, yes. Uh, I, I actually told him, I said, no, you got me in this race and uh, you're not going to get me out. And that's kind Man, of you were the reason, or he was the reason that you decided to run. Oh, absolutely. He was the reason. And so as a result of that, uh, uh, a couple of weeks later, actually it was February the 17th, uh, a good friend of mine who was also an employee of mine uh, named Jim Horn, uh, and he's a well-known, uh, well-respected individual uh, in Clay County. He's a past uh, commissioner of education, past Flo uh, president of the Florida Senate, uh, very well-off. And he had agreed to be my uh, campaign finance uh, chairman. Uh, so I hadn't heard from him after Cliff had said that uh, he was going to consider running. Right. So I called him, and on February the 17th, he called me back and essentially said it's going to be difficult to raise money now that Cliff's in the race. And I would encourage you to reconsider. And I told him I wasn't going to reconsider whether he was with me or not that I was going to run. He said, well, the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, is coming to Clay County on March the 2nd, Friday, March the 2nd. And he wants to meet with you. And Speaker Boehner. Speaker Boehner. The third most powerful man in, in America. Wanting to meet with little old Jimmy Jett in Clay County, which I felt was very interesting. So I said, uh, I said, really, uh, what does he want to meet with me for? And he said, well, he wants you out of the race, and he's willing to offer you anything you want to get you out of the race. So now whether that ever was true or not, I never spoke with uh, Speaker Boehner, never met with him. So... I don't know, but he was coming to Clay County on March the 2nd. Shortly thereafter, because I told him, I said, I, I, you know, I have no problems meeting with Speaker Boehner, but I really, there's nothing I want. I'm going to stay in the race and, and uh, continue. So I turned him down on that. On February the, the 19th, somewhere along in there, uh, Pete Sessions called me. He's the chairman of the Republican National Congressional Committee. Super nice guy, same thing. Uh, didn't make any offers or anything, very professional, said, look, we're all supporting Cliff Stearns. You may want to consider to get out. And I told him, look, I'm not getting out. I look forward to serving with you in January of 2013. I was at a function with another member of my finance committee uh, who was also good close friends of Jim Horns, named Judd Sapp. That's J-U-D-D, -D, not Judge. On uh, March 2nd, on, uh, I'm sorry, February the uh, 28th, just a few days before the, uh, uh, when uh, the, the speaker was coming in. And this is uh, the second meeting I'd had with Judd. He, mm -hmm. he first, a week earlier, had told me that uh, here's what they're going to offer and made some offers. And then on the 28th, it's kind of solidified. We're three days away. And he said, here's what they're going, that, that uh, Congressman Stearns is going to offer you. He says, number one, he's going to repay all of your campaign debts in excess of $25,000, either by hiring you to work in his campaign wow. and, and paying your salary, or by uh, uh, personally getting involved in campaign fundraising for you. He said, the second thing, we know you'll be out of a job in December because of uh, not running for clerk. Right. So we'll uh, make sure that we offer you one of these positions. Uh, number one, he said, uh, we can, uh, if the right president is elected, a Republican president, we, uh, Cliff is going to offer you the position as the head of the, um, 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 to, to, I forget the exact title, is that a federal position uh, in, in Florida. Um, so now I'll think of them in a minute. And the second thing, he was the head of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. He said, one of those two uh, positions, U.S. Marshal Service, the head okay. of the U.S. Marshal in the Southern District, or the, uh, if that doesn't work out because the wrong, wrong president is reelected, then uh, the head of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. He said, additionally, if that, either one of those work out, then uh, we'll get you a position as a lobbyist in Tallahassee. In addition to that, we're going to give you two tickets to the, uh, to the National Convention, Republican National Convention, uh, on the floor 
free wow. VIP status. Uh, wow. And I've heard they valued it anywhere yep. from twenty to thirty to forty thousand yep. dollars. So those were the offers, and at that point in time, I knew they'd cross the line, and uh, and under Florida law and under my oath of office, I have to report anything that I, it appears to be criminal misconduct. So I went to the sheriff, uh, myself and my brother, uh, who's a lieutenant with the sheriff's office, sat down with the sheriff in the state attorney's office, and I'd had a chronology of events, of all these phone calls, all these offers by these several different people, including Jim Horn, Cliff Stearns, and uh, Judd Sapp, and uh, uh, the sheriff looked at it and said, uh, this appears to be something that needs to be go up the horn to the federal authorities. Uh, my position to the sheriff at that time, and my position's always been, tell me I haven't done anything criminally wrong. I go home. Nobody knows anything. I continue the campaign. It's over with. Right. But he said, his exact quote was, you've run this bell. It appears to be criminal, so we've got to send it up. It was sent up to the U.S. Department of Justice and to the FBI, and essentially they agreed there was something. They called me to meet with the FBI. I did that, and they said, we want you to, uh, to uh, audio record these guys to substantiate what you have in this affidavit. And so I did that. They came to my house. Uh, they got permission for me to call both uh, Jim Horn and Judd Sapp on the night of the uh, 1st, March the 1st, 24 hours before the meeting was set up with, right. uh, with uh, Cliff Stearns. All right, let me, let, me, let me interject if I can. Where is Speaker Boehner at, in, in, the, in, the, at the, in the process here? All right, well, the FBI told me that they would not give permission uh, from Washington to audio tape uh, Speaker Boehner. Okay. Uh, and so they, he could not be at the meeting is what they said. And so, therefore, when I talked to both uh, Judd Sapp and to uh, Jim Horn, who was relaying the information to uh, Cliff Stearns, uh, I had to tell them uh, that I could not be present. Uh, I didn't want Boehner there. And they agreed. And I told them essentially, you know, uh, this was between Cliff and I. I wanted to talk to Cliff. He's the one that's guaranteeing these positions. I want him there. I don't want Boehner there. And they agreed. Uh, the FBI audio taped both conversations. And, uh, and in, during both conversations, they both confirmed every offer they had made. And both of them said, we're going to call Cliff Stearns to make sure, because I asked him, I said, please call Cliff one more time, make sure that uh, he is on board. Now, the FBI has also got the phone records. So as soon as they hung up, I am absolutely positive they called Cliff Stearns to confirm it because one of the people, Judd Sapp, called me back on two occasions between that night and the next day to reconfirm that the meeting was on, Cliff was on board, he could perform all of these and, and obviously, it's, uh, you know, he's the only one that stands anything to gain in this process. These two businessmen had nothing to gain. Cliff had everything to gain. Uh, essentially, to make a long story short, the next day, uh, the FBI could not get permission because Boehner reinserted himself into this. Uh, uh, Judge Sapp actually called around lunchtime on uh, the 2nd and said, the meeting's been moved uh, forward another half hour. It's going to be at 4 o'clock uh, because Speaker Boehner is taking a little too long in the golf tournament. And so, therefore, uh, uh, he and uh, Cliff Stearns are coming together. And as, as a result of that, the FBI said, we can't audio tape. Okay, so at this point, you now have uh, House Speaker Boehner and Cliff Stearns, apparently, on the way to come see you. On the way at 4 o'clock p.m. to Judd Sapp's house at a fundraiser that yep. had been set up for the Republican Party. All right, and as we close here this morning, uh, and unfortunately we've got about five minutes left, so if you will, uh, pick us up from, uh, from that point forward. So you're at 4 o'clock awaiting the arrival, supposedly, of Congressman Stearns correct. and House Speaker Boehner. Boehner. That's correct. Uh, the FBI said that uh, since we could not audio tape them, uh, they gave me permission to go over and at least tell Cliff Stearns that they were under investigation. Uh, it was an open investigation by the FBI, and to make sure Stearns did not publicly state that Jimmy Jett was supporting Cliff Stearns. I wanted to make sure that he understood that this was all part of the FBI investigation. So I went over. Uh, unfortunately, Speaker Boehner did not come. Uh, Cliff Stearns came walking in right at 4 o'clock, said Speaker Boehner had been detained, and so we all sat down, myself, my brother, 
uh, Cliff Stearns, Judd Sapp, and Jim Horn, and I told them at that point in time that I was not getting out of the race. I was not supporting Cliff Stearns. I was not taking any of their offers and that I had been in contact with the FBI and that the FBI had audio tapes of all their conversations as well as phone records. And so as a result of that, I said the meeting was over. I got up and left. And so I, I did contact the FBI a couple weeks ago to ask them the status of the investigation, and they told me that it is still an open investigation. Uh, they did say they have enough to, uh, to arrest both Judd Sapp and Jim Horn for a felony and a misdemeanor, but the investigation was, uh, was open at this time, and, uh, and they did not see it being concluded by August the 14th, the date of the election. Okay, so and that, that I guess is where we, where we leave off here. Uh, because uh, it is basically you have uh, uh, there's no closure yet from the FBI is what you're saying. Uh, that's correct. At right. least in three August the 14th, which is the uh, election date. The election date, yeah. Okay. Well, I, that's uh, obviously very interesting stuff, and I'm sure uh, things that uh, our listeners uh, uh, want to know about. And, of course, all this is public record, as you mentioned. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, well, the FBI tapes are not because they won't release them until they've concluded the investigation. But all the information contained in my affidavit right. and subsequent conversations, they can go on jamesjetforcongress.com and actually see the affidavit and see a three-hour interview where I went specifically into all of this, everything that happened during this investigation. Well, James, I really do appreciate you uh, coming in and taking the time uh, to lay out a lot of your uh, ideas, your platform, and obviously some insight into uh, uh, some of the shenanigans that go on behind the scenes. And uh, again, uh, unfortunate, but it does happen. And uh, I do certainly appreciate you sharing that with us. Well, thank you, Phil, for, for the opportunity, for a second opportunity to talk to your listeners. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Glad to have you in. And, uh, again, that's James Jett. He, along with uh, Cliff Stearns, Ted Yoho, and Steve Ulrich, are all seeking the newly drawn Congressional District 3 seat. Again, which uh, if you're within the sound of my voice, you live within the District 3. So, uh, again, very important uh, that we have these candidates in here uh, to tell us about their viewpoints, where they stand on things. And um, I do appreciate you coming in. I really do. Thank you. All right, folks, let's take a break, and we'll come back and wrap things up this morning on the Monday morning version of the Phil Jones Show. We'll be right back with more right after this.